Good morning. Good morning. My name is Lugenia James, and I will be your moderator for today, this class. <clears throat> today is March the 13th, 2024. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video button during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class, an international honest hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operations of his eternal purpose pattern and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, and Zambia, and students studying in Bahama, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. Doctor, the host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original names and titles of the Father, the Word, or the Holy, or the Son of the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of the physical body is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted for Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and God's movement. But we know, we know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. And Lord is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, nor the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither are there a J in the English alphabet until some 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible, inscrutable and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolizing on this chart, Moses chart, as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Yahweh knowing that man could not see of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or sign a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man 
but without flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. This form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this same, this self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim may be had by reading the preference of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses to top Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern and a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill and fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary aims and objectives are as follows. First, we help you find <laughs> And know Yahweh I Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so called law of nature and the power latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scripture, compare religious, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extricate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon or Satan and his demons operating in the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah and attempt to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification <clears throat> in the new earth state <clears throat> our watch word is peace sorry and our slogan is speak the truth May we have a prayer by um, Dr. Teresa Baker, please. Our son, Dr. Lenore Allen, please. Our readers, scripture reader, Dr. Edna Mixon, is she here? First Corinthians 15 chapter. It's 1550 through 50, uh, 58. Yes, I'm sorry. Dr. Edna Mixon not here, so let me see. Hmm. How about Dr. Lucy Altman? May she help me as that? 
scripture reading, please. Uh, yes. Um, uh, do we do the song first or no? So I was just getting that over to, over with the scriptures and everything. So yes. Oh yes, ma'am. Yes, I will read it. No problem. The prayer is supposed to be done first. Yes. Dr. Teresa Baker. Dr. Baker. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, brethren. Let us all bow in our hearts and minds and appreciate the true teaching of Yahshua the Messiah, who you gave to a man at the end of this age by the name of Dr. Henry Clipper Kenley, that you got into that vessel and taught us your truth the way it should be taught at the end of this age. Father, we thank you for everything you have done for us, everything that you are doing for us, and everything that you will do for us to keep us steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in your work, Father, at the end of this age. All these things we thank you for and these blessings we thank you for in the precious name of your Son and our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. May we all say, Hallelujah. 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 Hello, I'd like to sing today, His Name is Wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Yahshua is his name. He is the mighty king, master of everything. His name is wonderful. Yahshua is his name. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, redeemer of all is he. Bow down before him, praise and adore him. His name is wonderful. Yeshua is his name. Hallelujah. Short and sweet. Okay, good morning. Our scripture lesson this morning is 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, the 50th through the 58th verses. 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Therefore, my beloved brethren, movable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in him. Hallelujah. We thank everyone. We thank everyone for their participation, and I will now turn this class over to the host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Your readers for today? Oh, Dr. Lila Morrison and Dr. Joyce Van Ho. Okay, thank you very much for gathering up with us together. Glad to be back with you. And we're going to be reading the 1965 special three-hour meeting, Kaz Magani to eschatology. It's also called Beginning to Ending, also called Godhead Through the Ages and Dispensations. This is by Dr. Kinley, and it's 1965. 
And the reason that I want to be looking at something like this is that there's going to be a gathering in Northside with the Northside Chicago class and their, what do you call it? Their topic is eschatology, which, which means um, the last days. So, um, so we're going to start from here. Okay. Uh, I don't see Dr. Morris, but I will begin. I'll help out until she comes. Okay, thank you, Dr. McCain. Dr. Kinley. Oh, this is tape one, side one. Dr. Kinley. Also, that you can bring all the information that you could gather, even that you should bring your Bible and your dictionary and, comment and commentators or any items you could find to the point. I told you that what we are going to do was to give you a lecture on these charts and our purpose. Intentions and objectives was to explain the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, or that means from the first chapter and the first verse on down to the 22nd chapter and the last verse. Tie it up so that you can understand it. Not only that, we wanted to investigate God, the Godhead and the creation. Now, there's nothing left for nobody to investigate. Now that takes in the sum total of everything. Now that's the creator and the created then we wanted to pass that down and explain it like this from the cosmo from cosmogony now that means origin don't get excited at them words to eschatology eschatology is a doctrine that teaches and pertaineth to last things so if cosmogony or cosmology is the beginning and eschatology is the ending, that just means that the first, that just, that just, that just means the first and the last, the start and the finish. Now, that's the way we want. That's what we wanted. That's what we, we wanted to do. Now then, we want to investigate it. Now you listen to, you listen at me. At me. In the dispensations and ages, as it comes down through the dispensations and ages. Now, one of the things I want you to understand first is, now we'll have to use. Now we are forced to do one of the things I want you to understand first is, now we'll have to use. Now we are forced to do this, and God did this a natural to show a spiritual. So now since we are forced to use the natural to show the spiritual, that means that every cosmic phase of nature is some or another expression of invisible and inscrutable and incomprehensible God in nature. Now you can't find anything in nature other than what God put there and it is organized and put together and is a copy of spiritual things in nature. Now, if man understood that, then he's talking about scientific research. If he understood or had some knowledge of what he's looking for in the first place, then he would realize that he can't hope to find nothing in nature that wouldn't reflect the Godhead. It's impossible. It cannot be done. You understand now? Now, is that clear to you? Yes. All, yeah. all you can, oh, thank you, Doc. All you can hope to do, or any man can hope to do, and all that can be done is a research. And if you notice, we call this institution a research institution. Now, in research, we're not trying to find out what our ancestors or progenitors through 
thought about nothing. Now, now that's not what we're concerned about. And we're not particularly concerned about what you thought because now here's the reason why. We know that your or all our ancestors called it. I'm sorry. Now we know what your or all of our ancestors call it. We know what you think. So why waste time listening at you run your mouth and me run my mouth? You get it now? Now, what we want to know and what we teach in this school, we want to know God as he really is and as he actually exists. We're not concerned about what they decided at the ecumenical council, neither the Roman Catholics nor Protestants or any other for that matter, and the, dec and the decrees and ultimatums and issues in which we were involved. Now, is that clear to you? Now, we don't mind disagreeing with them. We don't care anything about it. And we're not trying to stay in harmony, unity, with no teaching at all on earth. You get it? Remember, I told you now, what we're looking for is God as he really is and as he actually exists. Now, God is said to be the creator. Is that right? Right. Then, he being the creator, everything that he created in all the natural or physical realm, don't forget, is a reflection in the material realm or visible realm of what is in the spiritual realm. Do you understand? Now, you have to get this right here. Um, excuse me. Oh, I just want to say something. I know that we're trying to be true to what's being said, but being now that we know that the names were coming out about this time, shouldn't we be using like Yahweh and Yahshua? I think it probably should be read as it's written because there may be some points he's trying to get across. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I think we should use the name and when we see that, oh yeah, we should use God. Because there's going to be plenty of people coming on here that don't know. And we're the ones that do know. So he's talking about Yahweh is said to be the creator. Is that right? And it's going to be talking about the revelation of, of Yahshua the Messiah, not Jesus Christ. What say ye? I, I say use that name because we know it's true. Yeah, I think we need to use the true names here. Okay, let me go back to the beginning here. Otherwise, it's, it's confusion. It looks like you can use them interchangeably, and you can't. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kidley, then he being the creator, everything that he created in all the natural or physical realm, don't forget, is reflection in the material realm or visible realm of what is in the spiritual realm. Do you understand? Now, you have to get this straight here. Now, if you fail to get this straight, the physical, the visible, then you're going to be out of harmony with the invisible. Now, now I have got it clear. Now, now have I got it clear before you. Now, John in Revelation said this, or this is what Revelation said the first chapter of Revelation. Suppose you, you better read that. Then, then you won't be saying that that man said, that man said, the first chapter of Revelations, I want you to begin at the first verse. The revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. The revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. Which Yahweh gave unto him. Which... Yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants read things which must shortly come to pass yes and he sent sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John who bear record of the word of Yahweh and the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah and all things that he saw blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words, words of the prophecy, 
and keep these things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. For the time is at hand. Read on. John, to the seven assemblies which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Yahshua the Messiah, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto Yahweh and his father. And to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Hallelujah. Now, that's in and the beginning. Read on. You you just got started. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. Now, it says, behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Now, people will read down there and read that, and they don't know why it is said that behold, he cometh with clouds. They don't have no idea about it. Not even a real good imagination. Mm -hmm. Now, but if you were able, if you were able and if you understood when he read a while ago about this cloud, about that cloud leading them out of Egypt, then it stood over the tabernacle. If you understood about it and Elohim abode, aboding or cloud above the wings or above the mercy seat between the wings of the cherubim and the cloud standing over, then you'll then you'll have some idea what John is talking about. You get the point? All right, read. Behold, he cometh with the clouds. Uh-huh. And every eye shall see him. Uh-huh. And they also which pierced him. And they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. And all kindreds of the earth. Now everything come out of Adam. Everything. It don't make no difference what nationality you belong to. Everything come out of Adam. You understand that now? You listening? Now... I'm going to try to place these words every time I speak so that you will comprehend. Now, if everything come out of Adam, that's the physical man, then this physical man, now we have already told you that Elohim made, was a reflection of the invisible Elohim and invisible man. Now, do you see it now? You see that? That's clear? Now you can look at a physical man and he is made in the likeness and image of Elohim or Yahweh. Now when you look at the man, please be advised that you're looking at Elohim's own description of himself. All right. All right. Now science cannot improve on it. Nobody can improve on it. Can't be any improvements made. Catch it? Now, if now for you to know something about Elohim, look at the man, analyze him, scrutinize it, investigate him, find out why he's built as he is built and why he has this and that and the other. If you notice a while ago when Dr. Yates was reading about the boards and the pillars and the coverings of the tabernacle, and so forth and so on, the boards, now then, that would run you into the orthopedic structure or the bone structure of the man. And if you notice a while ago, when he read the eighth chapter and the fifth verse, uh, verse that Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle, said, See, 
to it that you make all things according to the pattern shown you in the mount. Now you make sure, Moses, that you make it just like the pattern. Now what will happen if you don't? Now what will happen if you don't? Now this is what will happen if you don't make it like the tabernacle that he saw in the vision while he was up in the mount. Then you have the structure of the man all thrown out of kilter. You got the Godhead all messed up and you got all the nature messed up you've imparted the wrong impression so you make it your business to see to make it your business to see it that you make the tabernacle like i showed you in the mount now that'll take care of the argument now if the minister understood these things we wouldn't be making all kinds of errors and mistakes we would be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same spirit, and we wouldn't have all these sects and cults and creeds and denominations and ideas and opinions. Now, did you ever stop to think? And I told you many times, but I'm sure that the thing usually goes out the door. It just don't stick up here. Now, if you don't make the tabernacle like Yahweh said make it, then the tabernacle is going to be threefold. It's going to have a most holy place, holy place, and a place, a holy place, and a court, and an outer court. Now, that's the way it was showed to Moses in the mount up there. Get that? Now, the man, he's got to be just like the tabernacle because the tabernacle is nothing other than the man transfigured or transformed into it. Right. That's right. Now, when I say the man, I meant spirit. Yahweh is spirit. You can't perceive, per comprehend, scrutinize, or investigate. You can't do nothing about that. Can't see it. There's no way to get in harmony with it. Now, Elohim had to do something about that. So... When Elohim himself takes on incorporeal form, not in totality. Now, the reason why I said not in totality, but in part, it meant that spirit, inconceivable so far as shape and form, is concerned, incomprehensible. And while I'm there and while I'm at that, I want to make you know that you too were in that. That's where you were in all incorporalization or non-spiritual things, all spiritual and or all spiritual. Listen, all spiritual. I'm not making no mistakes. I know what I'm talking about. All spiritual things and all physical things come from Yahweh. In short, matter come <laughs> from spirit. Now, if matter come from spirit, if that's the origin, then in its disintegration and dissolution, it must return to the source from whence it came. That's right. Do you understand? Now then, if spirit being inconceivable and incomprehensible took on in part, now, I mean, it's just like, here's the sum total of this whole room. All the air and everything in this room, which you couldn't see with your physical eyes, which is spirit. Then, to draw a line of demarcation, an outline that could be seen in a vision, it wouldn't take the sum total of all of it to do that. It wouldn't take all the air in the building to do that, but you would rather together you would you would you would gather together enough I'm sorry enough to make a little fellow like me, and you could see that I'm in the room and you could discern my presence here now then. That can be seen through a vision. Now, that's the Elohim of Israel. 
that took on this. This pure spirit took on this shape and form. Now then, this shape and form inhabits spirit or the realm of eternity. Now, eternity means that which has no beginnings and that, that has no end. Always was, always will be. Somebody thinks they're smart, you know, said, well, where did God come from? Now, you're supposed to be trapped. Get the point? Well, let me tell you, are you listening? He is the ultimate source. He is the substance himself. Source in himself. I'm sorry, Doc? Source himself. He, wait a minute. Okay, now you're supposed to be trapped. Get the point? Well, let me tell you. Are you listening? He is the ultimate source. He is the source himself. Then say, <laughs> well, where did, is he going to? Now, I'm answering these questions. These are big theological questions that have baffled the minds of scientists and man over since you've been here. There isn't anywhere, Elohim, to anywhere for Yahweh to go because he is the source. Listen, he is the substance. And finally, he is all in all. Now that's all. All right. Then that would make him the final destiny from whence matter. Let me put it this way. From which incorporalization that spiritual things are invisible things like the angels and like they saw visions, ghosts you talk about. Then he came on down from that state into a more grosser state of cosmic materialization, meaning that spirit underwent these changes. Now, the ghost, that's a meditation. That's, I'm sorry, that is a mediation. That's between pure spirit and dense matter. All right. Now, that's what was to be reflected in this tabernacle. One, two, three. Three parts. Now, then three parts make up that one tabernacle. See that now? Is that clear? Now, since then three parts make up that one tabernacle that Moses saw in a vision, now this is not an old physical tabernacle that Moses has run up in Mount Sinai in Mount Sinai and looking at a physical tabernacle. It's an intangible and invisible, and he was not seeing it with his physical eyes. He is seeing it in a vision, permitted this conscience, his mind and all could be in a state where he could discern an incorporeal or thing in its intermediate state and see that. And then Elohim told him, said, now you see to it that you make all things according to the pattern which I showed you in the mouth. For see, saith he, that she. Now, he, we had him to read that to you over there in the Bible, right? Right. Would you please continue, Dr. McCain? Okay. Now then, are you listening? When you go into matter, now this is scientific. You want to get all scientific and talk about how smart you are. Then when you go into matter, into the smallest ultra microscopic, let me, let me tear them words down. I have to spend so much time tearing down something, breaking it up and giving it to you so you can understand it. Now, it means something that you cannot see with your physical eyes. That ultra microscopic, you know, when you put the, your glasses on in the mag, you put your glasses on it to magnify and to enlarge so you can see it. 
where that can't be done natural. So then that's all microscopic particles of matter. Now in our scientific researchers, Martin, I'm talking about the best that we have been able to come up with is 92 different particles of matter or atomic elements of matter, 92. Now, now Wallace, they have to agree over in Russia. They have to agree in the United States. They have to agree in France and England, just all over the world. And that's all they can find. Well, now, why is that all that they can find? Because that's all Yahweh put in it. You can't find nothing there that Yahweh didn't put there. Do you see what I mean? Because we are coming right down out of the invisible through the intermediate and down into the more dense or concrete and we're going to investigate it. Now, Russia said there isn't, they, they don't believe in the God. They don't, now, they don't, they don't really believe in what you think. They don't mean that. They, what they mean when they say that they are hopeless atheists, now, this is what they mean. They mean that they don't believe in the God of Christian doom, and neither do I. And I'm far more hopeless two to one than they are. Well, then, what about the God of Christian doom? Christian doom has taught that there's a man sitting up way above the sun, moon, and stars, looking down, watching everything you do everything you think, and someday, which they call the day of judgment, that he'll jump down out of the sky and through the clouds and come down here and convict you for the things that you've done. Now that's ignorance. Now that's the God of Christian doom. Now the papacy, when I say the papacy, I'm talking about the Roman Catholics. They claim that the Pope takes the, the place of an invisible God on earth, and he becomes the invisible God on earth, just like the Messiah, just like Peter, and just like the apostles, so they think. So then, as Yahweh inhabits eternity, Isaiah 57, 15, then he inhabits the Vatican as a representative on the earth or the dense, the physical, or the invisible on earth of the invisible God, which you imagine that's just so bright and so illuminous and so forth and so on. He represents him. Hmm. Now then, we have elected him and his word is final. So it is said that Protestantism come out of Roman Catholic, Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism come out of Judaism. Now that's the way they got it set up. That's the way you and everybody else have been taught, me too. That's what they teaching now everywhere. That is not so. This is not the way it is. Not true. Now listen, if man is made in the likeness and image of Yahweh, now look, listen at these words. If man is made in the likeness and image, man, I said, not men, I said man. I didn't say God's, I said God. If he is made in the likeness and image, get the word image. Now this is an image. This comes from here. Just draw the line of demarcation. It's incorporeal. 
that spiritual, it's an image and only seen through visions and revelations. Then the man Adam was made in the physical, in the likeness of this one. So then that man is made in the image of Yahweh. Now, it didn't take three gods or three distinctive individual personalities or individuals as Christian Doom teaches it. It's not that. Here's how we get it. We're saying that Wallace is the father. Rip here is the son. That's two. And Dr. Jackson, he's the third. But now they all have the same objective and purpose and intention. But now you got three distinctive individual personalities in the Godhead. That's not the way it is because this one man is made in the likeness and image of the one Elohim. Now, if the tabernacle was a description and all of nature is a description, then the tabernacle has to be most holy place and holy place and outer court. Then, if that is taken from the transformation of this man into the tabernacle, and incidentally, this is the temple here, then this man here has to be made like that. That means this, that he's got to be Numa, Psyche, and Soma. In other words, he's got to be soul, body, and spirit right there. Instead of this one being that and that one being this, three distinctive individual personalities. Now, if it was three different distinctive individual personalities, now listen, this is this man is Numa, Psyche, and Soma, or soul, body, and spirit. So also is this one. So now then, instead of having three make it up or constituting the one, you got a duplication. And if you have a duplication, then you got three here and you got three there. That's six. And then you got another one taking the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Then you got Roger here. Then now you got nine. Now you see what I mean? Can't be like that. It's not that way. Pretty tough, ain't it? See what I mean? Now, are you really listening? Excuse me, are you mm -hmm. ready to listen? Yes. yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not wasting no words on these highly academic expressions, scientific. This is the ultimate that I am trying to convey to you now. Now, when Yahweh, which is pure spirit, taking on this shape and this form that could be seen in visions, this couldn't. Are you listening? Then Yahweh, Yahweh is spirit. This is spirit. There's nothing in this that isn't in that and ain't nothing in this and in that that ain't in nature. Get it now? Now you listen and follow. When he's taking on this shape and this form, I'm coming from pure spirit. Then this, what wasn't used in the embodiment, now that's the substance is, excuse me, now that the substance is any different then this shape and this form reaches back into the substance, which is the fatherhood. Then he makes the angelic host. Everything that is in heaven and it, 
it must follow the same line. Then he makes everything that is in earth after him because he is the archetype. Now, the word archetype means original pattern. So everything in heaven and everything in earth must be fashioned like he is. Everything he tells man to do so far as a structure is concerned has got to be made like that. That's why he told Moses, see, to it, that you build it like I showed you the pattern up there in the mount. And then that means it'll have a most holy place divided by the veil, a holy place, that's two. Down here would be three. You have one, two, three compartments, parts, component. then component parts, then the father, the Godhead or supernal nature must be the father, the word, and the Holy Spirit, and all three of them make up one. One what? One Godhead. Now, do you see that now? Now then, after taking on that shape and form, you follow me because where I am now, I'm where countless have even dared to tread. All right, right. And I'm going to prove it too, like it is, like I said. I'm going to prove it by the Bible. Remember, I told you we want to take it from Genesis to Revelations, but I don't want you to get lost in the preliminaries. These are preliminaries. Now, if we can't, and now we can get started straight, are you listening now? And the end has been declared from the beginning. Now, if you get way over here in the middle, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are over here in Revelations, Revelation, and then you'll run up and say, run up, you say, well, I don't understand the book of Revelation. I don't understand this. No, that's not where your trouble is. Well, your trouble is you don't understand the beginning of the thing. Now, that's where your trouble is but you're not wise enough to comprehend and you give your own self away, but you, you give your own self away, but you do not unconsciously when you say, I don't understand the book of revelation. Now Excuse you just, me. it said, but, but you do it unconsciously. You said not, but you do it unconsciously. No, that's not where your trouble is, where your trouble is, you don't understand the beginning of the thing. Now that's where your trouble is, but you're not wise enough to comprehend and you give your own self away, but you do not, but you do it unconsciously when you say, I don't understand the book of Revelation. Now you just said unconsciously, you didn't understand the Bible at all. In other words, you didn't understand the Genesis. That's what you said. But now you didn't realize that's what you said. But the end was declared right from the beginning. Now, this is what I'm after. Now, this is what I'm after. And this is why I'm saying this to you. In the first chapter of Ephesians, the apostle Paul says this, are you listening? The purpose which Yahweh purposed within himself before he started to make anything, angels, heaven and earth or anything, the purpose which he purposed within himself, Yahweh Elohim, that he himself take on in this incorporeal form. And then after he takes on this incorporeal form, then he makes everything in heaven 
and everything in earth to fit that. Now that means this, listen, Paul's talking about the purpose said in the fullness of the dispensations of time as it's running down through the, through the course of nature and all that Yahweh Elohim had declared within himself. It has its origin and beginning as it comes down through history. Now, what is the ultimate? What is the purpose? Now, he did this. He purposed this within himself before he began anything that in the final conclusion of everything, he would gather into himself everything that there is in heaven and everything that there is in earth. That ought to draw a great big question mark. Why? Then here's the answer to the question, because that is the source from whence they came, and that is the source from whence they go into. Do you see that now? Yes. Okay. Is it clear? Now, I stopped you from reading, didn't I? Now, if you read on, i show you why I stopped you. Read on. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. The beginning and the ending. All right, read. Saith Yahweh. Saith Yahweh. Which is? Which is? And, yeah, you got some more. Oh. Wow, yours is different. Which is, and this got low on the Which hollow. was? Oh, okay. Mine is different. I'm sorry. Mine's got which is location on the Isle of Patmos. You're finding the Aegean Sea. Now he said he was on the Isle of Patmos. Now what is an isle? It's a land surround. That's, that's not on the screen. Doc. Yeah, could I'm you sorry. read what's on the screen? All okay, right, go let's on. go back to the reader. The reader says which is which is yes. Which was that's that there, and which is to come, and which is to come. Now that's all three. That's all that there is. All right. The Almighty. Wow, they missed. Oh, you know what? I am so sorry. I'm dumb. I'm a stupid woman. No, you're not. I just didn't turn the page over. It's on the back side. Where we at, baby? I'm sorry. Uh, it's at the reader where it says the Almighty. The Almighty. I, John. First John. I, John. I, John. Yeah. Who am also your brother. Who also am your brother. And companion in tribulation. Companion in tribulation. In the kingdom. In the kingdom. And patience of Yahshua the Messiah. In the kingdom and patience of Yahshua the Messiah. Was in the isle that is called Patmos. Was in the isles which was called Patmos. For the word of Yahweh. For the word of Yahweh. And for the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah. For the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah. Now you heard what he read, didn't you? Now, you sat there and listened at that, didn't you? He said he was in the Isle, which is called Patmos. Now, if you knew geographically and ge geography and geographical location of the Isle of Patmos, you'll find in the Aegean Sea. Now, he said he was in the Isle of Patmos. That's what he, that's what is an island, excuse me. Now, what is an island? Go take over, Joyce. It's okay. land by water. Is that right? And right. Right. Okay. okay. Now, he said he was there for a purpose. What purpose was he there for? For the word of Yahweh. 
Is that right? Right. <clears throat> now, that makes now that makes me to have to stop right here and park here to get up to this, up to that which you just read and explained this. Now, Yahweh was manifested, so says the Apostle Paul, to Timothy and to the Corinthians and to and also the the Thessal Thessalonian Thessalonians, are you listening now? Yahweh that made the universe and its in its totality was Yahshua the Messiah, or he was in a physical body. Now listen, he told you this. This spirit taking on excuse me. I'm sorry. There was just thing. It says Yahweh that was in the universe was in Yahshua the Messiah. That's what I thought I said, Doc. No, you missed it up a little bit, but that's okay. okay. Universe in its totality was in Yahshua the Messiah, or he was in a physical body. Now listen, we told you this, this spirit taking on incorporalization, that's seen, that's a, a ghost, and the now where where you find it there in the 24th chapter of Exodus 9 and 10. That's not my imagination. And it was seen of 70 elders and also of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu when they were called up into the mount. Then they saw this vision up here. Then, then the same Elohim listened take on a physical form. Tape one, side two. Whom you call. Okay. Now, what do you want to say here? Whom you call Jesus Christ? Because that, well, okay. Whom you call Jesus Christ? Well, that's not so either. Justice Christus is translated from out of Hindu. Yahshua the Messiah, or Emmanuel, was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Now, a lot of you don't even know that. A lot of your preachers don't even know that. And they've run this stuff up here in your book, which we call the Bible. It's just not so. And you won't find no true Jew on earth that believes in Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't learn nothing else, you've learned something. You've learned something today. But now, for the sake of imparting to you, so you can understand, I'll just go right on. Now, we have a book and a research work in this book now, we told you all about that in that book. Roman Catholics know better. They know better. Now, that's an idol for, from India, Justice Christus. And when the International Council of Churches meet in New Delhi, India, they saw those idols, and it come from, the, from India and around... <laughs> through Germany and into and into the Vatican. And they went back in this book, which we call the Bible, and put Jesus Christ all the way through it, and no Jew will accept it. Now you are told in Isaiah the eighth chapter and the twentieth verse, read it. Now I haven't lost the continuity of thought myself. To the law. Now, Isaiah is writing about this, and he's telling you what Yahweh said. Yahweh said for you to go to the law. Read. And to the testimony. And to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. Now, if they speak not according to this word. It is because there is no light in them. 
He don't know nothing about it. Get the point? Now, if they don't, now you go back there. Now you go back there. Now when you go back to the law and the prophecy, you won't find Jesus Christ mentioned in it. Right. Suppose we do that. Isaiah 7 and 14. Therefore. <clears throat> therefore. Yahweh Elohim himself. The Lord who? What'd you what you say? Oh, okay. The Lord himself. Okay. Oh, no. Now, don't you start no argument with Yahweh. Don't start that. Don't, don't start that stuff here. Therefore, <laughs> the Lord himself <laughs> shall give you a sign. Shall give you a sign. Behold. Behold. A virgin. A virgin. Shall conceive. Shall conceive. And bear a son. And bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. And shall call his name Emmanuel. Now you know what the law said. That's what she should call his name. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. And thou shall call his name Emmanuel. What? Emmanuel. <clears throat> what else? You want me to read further? That'll do. Now you see what it's saying? Better read a little further. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Read on. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou apportest shall be forsaken for of both her kings. Thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Now, I didn't say that. So don't go running out of here and say, that man said. That's what they've been doing all the time because I dispute these, these preachers out here. Now, that's in, that's in the prophecy. Is that right? Now then, let's get let's get in what you call the New Testament, which it's not. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not the New Testament. Now it's in all Protestant and all Roman Catholic Bibles that way. It is not the New Testament. Now, if you would look at the New Covenant. Look at what Yahweh said. He said after Jeremiah 31 and 31. I have to make mention of these things because he's making a recording here. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 31. That's the prophet. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will make, I will, I'll do that. Just like he said about heal show you a sign. Yahweh himself said, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Now, listen. After those days, after their hearts, will I write my law. Not Matthew, not Mark, not Luke, not John, but Yahweh. It was Yahweh that made the first covenant with Israel. And it shall be Yahweh that makes the second covenant. It was Yahweh that wrote them tables of stone with his fingers. And it is Yahweh that writes in fleshly tables of your heart. So says Second Corinthians, the third chapter. Shall we begin again to commend ourselves or need or is it necessary Ye are our epistles written in our hearts, read and known of all men. All you got to do is open your big mouth and you'll tell on yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we, I said that because we got some license here. Minister's license. That, that won't fit it. We don't need no commendation to nor from right 
Right. But nevertheless, the law requires it. So we're going to give you a license. Those of you that haven't received went and got them, got, got them right here. But when Yahweh is in a man's heart and in his mind, listen, I said in the book, you're inseparable. You're not independent of Yahweh. Yahweh setting up there in the sky somewhere. That's a carnal mind. Mm -hmm. And someday he's going to jump down out of there and catch you with your <laughs> works up to date or undone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just trying to tell you so you can understand. Man is inseparable from Yahweh. He comes from Yahweh. It is in him. In him now. That's why I got to go back to this Jesus. I am, believe me, that I am in the Father. 17th chapter, John. And the Father is in me. Lest mm -hmm. believe on me for my very work's sake. Yahweh that made the universe was in that body. Yahweh that made the universe, you're hooked up to him. You can't get outside. It's in him that you live and you have your move and have your being. 17th mm -hmm. chapter of Acts of the Apostles. Uh, Paul in Mars Hill in Athens, Greece. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. I told you that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, these three are one. And I told you that man was made in the likeness and image of Elohim. And therefore, you was Numa, Psyche, and Soma. You were soul, body, and spirit. Say, what did you say God was? Yahweh is spirit. So you're spirit, soul, and body. Yahweh is spirit manifested in this incorporeal. That's and that's you can see this told you matter comes from spirit and that's why you're shaped and formed and made like you are. You are a part of Yahweh and Yahweh is part of you. There's no way to escape. There's getting there's there's getting outside of him, but your conscious and realization of it. That's something else. Mm -hmm, right. You get the point. <laughs> it's in him we live and we move and have our being. David said, if I took the wings of the morning and flew on beyond the sun, moon, and stars, or made my, if I took the wings of the morning and he flew off, penetrated the ionosphere, stratosphere, troposphere, and ionosphere, and then went on out into boundlessness of space where the astronauts have even dared to tread. If I did that, then Yahweh was there. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I tell you I'll work just as well down here. It works. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It'll work just as well down here as it will there. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is there. If I make my bed in hell, He's there. Whither shall I go to flee from the presence of Yahweh? From Yahweh. And that's what Yahshua was praying out there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. Father, make them one, not three, but one, even as we are. Make them conscious of it. And then when you become conscious of it, then you know me and I know you. Nothing mm -hmm. hid. Everything is open when you make a wrong pass. And then you have to apologize. Pardon me. Then you have an apology to make, just like I had to do. So I don't have nothing to boast about. I had to do that too. But if ever he's caught up in the spirit or the thing has been revealed to him, then he's embarrassed. And he must come back and say, say, look, I'm sorry. I taught you wrong. I'm mistaken about it. You see the point? Get mm -hmm. it? Now, 
it'd be better to do that and save your soul than it would be for you to keep on going on with your hard head because you're going to ram into it any, anyhow. That's right. <laughs> you just might as well humble yourself and stoop. Mm -hmm. And then Paul told Timothy, he said, for this cause, I bow my knees. Yes, indeed. And mm -hmm. he persecuted the church and he seen for this cause when he seen that incorporeal that Stephen saw when he was being stoned to death and Paul seen it. And for this cause, I bow my knees. I admit that the Sanhedrin council sent me out here with a license and with authority to accuse you because they said that the soldiers come and stole him away after he had resurrected from the dead. But I seen him myself and now I'm ready. I'm ready to die. I'm mm -hmm. ready to fight. I'm ready to withstand all opposition of science, falsely so-called as Paul told Timothy. I'm ready. I'm prepared. And said, when it pleased Yahweh who separated him from his mother's womb to put him in the ministry, when it pleased him to do that, oh, I tell you, oh boy, I tell you, it's something else. Mm -hmm. That man was caught up on into the third heaven. I wonder why it's three heavens. Don't you see with it down here? First, second, third. This is the first. And it is just backwards. I'm trying to tell you through the scriptures some kind of way so you can understand and understand. And he saw in that in heaven things that are impossible for him to find lexicologies and etymologies, a word sufficient to describe to your and to my carnal consciousness what he saw there didn't make no difference whether he spoke with more languages than all of them, but tongues just couldn't tell it. He had to see it. It had to be revealed. The meaning of these things that you just read in the book was to be revealed. Now, what Now, what did I stop you again for? I haven't lost the continuity of thought. More than likely, you... You have, but I haven't, because your mind will run off on a tangent, and you can't follow through. So then what I have to do every once in a while is go back and bring you up to date. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about, now, we're talking about, here's what we're talking about, to the law and to the testimony. And I had Dr. Harris go over there and read it, just yeah, that that Jesus Christ was not mentioned in the law. That's right. I told you where he was from. Now, if they don't speak like it's mentioned over there, then it's because there's no light in them. Now, that was Isaiah that was, and that was Yahweh that said, I'll give you a sign, wasn't it? Wasn't Isaiah, wasn't wasn't Isaiah that said he's gonna give no sign? All right, he said, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Now, what I would, what I would do if it was me and the way I've always done it ever since. Yahweh elevated me out there in the spirit. They say, behold, a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Wonder why? No, we got out there and say the Roman Catholic Church, he's talking about the mother of God being a mother, and you can go on from there. That's not the way. I do. I question Yahweh. Why is it that you're going to have a virgin to bring forth a son? 
what's that for the what what's that for in the first place? A virgin too. I'm not disputing what Yahweh with Yahweh what he didn't say that I want to know why he did, why he said it, what gave him the idea. You see how I make my investigation? Now look, mm -hmm. listen, we told you that matter come from spirit and spirit didn't have no conceivable shape and form. And spirit was the sum total of everything. Is that right? Then we told you that Yahweh himself, taking on the shape and form, and form or spirit taking on a descriptive shape and form that you could see in visions and revelations. Is that right? Right. Then we said, after he took on that form, he created the angelic host. And then afterwards, he created the physical host. Is that right? Right. <clears throat> We told you that the invisible is understood by the invisible. Is that right? By the visible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then if pure spirits taking on the shape and form and incorporate, then he come on down into here and took on this. Then you, you hear me? The earth itself, which is the physical, it's got to be produced in its organic and inorganic. That's got to be a coring mass of physical matter without any descriptive shape or without any descriptive form. You see that? Mm -hmm. You see it now? If that's the way this was back here and it would follow through. If that's the way that was then, that's the way matters got to be. Moses said there in the beginning, in the beginning of what? The creator. Oh, no. In the beginning of his vision. Now, we got you up a tree both ways, every kind of way. In the beginning of his vision, not the beginning of the creation. Because I told you, he created the incorporeal first. The angelic took on shape and form first. And then reflected that down in matter in the physical earth. Is that right? And I'm investigating. I told you the Godhead and everything else. All right. Now then, matter then, you was reading over there about John on the Isle of Patmos, wasn't you? Or somebody was. Say now, what in the world is he reading over there for? He's, what's he reading here? And yonder for, I told you that Yahweh, Yahweh created the heaven and the earth and was manifested in a physical body. Is that right? Walked around here. Now, you're fixing to read over there in Matthew 1 and 21. Now, we went to the law and we found it in the law that his name shall be called Emmanuel. And these names have an interpretation in Hebrew. All right, read in Matthew. And she shall bring forth. Where are you reading? Matthew 121. Matthew 121. All right, read. And she shall bring forth a son. And she shall, and she shall, this virgin shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Yahshua. And thou shalt call his name Yahshua. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now, where does Jesus mean save? It's translated Greek. Out in the Greek means Jesus means save. Christ means anointed. But that's not the original. That's not over there in the scriptures. Well, say, the New Testament was written first in Greek. I beg your pardon. It wasn't no such thing. Everything you put your hands on, you don't realize that everything you get your hands on is nothing but a profound mess. Now, let me show you the colossal stupidity in that. You won't lose the you won't lose the thought, will you? 
You won't lose, yeah, you won't lose the thought, will you? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, Doc, would you continue for me, please? Now, Yahweh is talking to Israel, said, after those days, I would make a new covenant with Israel. When he spoke here, he spoke in Hebrew. Have to speak this, because that's what they're speaking, Hebrew. And if Yahweh speaks in anything else but Hebrew, then they wouldn't understand what he was talking about. Moses wouldn't have known neither with the children of Israel. And this is the speaker. This is the first assembly. And this is the, this is the speaker. Yahweh was speaking in the assembly means congregation or assembly. Well, church, congregation means assembly. Okay. Yahweh was speaking in the church means congregation and assembly. They were congregated up around Mount Sinai. Yahweh is speaking in the assembly said, I am Yahweh thy Elohim that bought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have no other Elohims before me. Put it down like this. That's me that's speaking. And that's the same Elohim that made the new covenant, that made it with the house of Israel. And now he's going to make another covenant with the house of Israel. Won't make it like the one he made before. Now, now what I'm telling you about is what the people think is the New Testament is not the New Testament. That ain't what I'm talking about. Yahweh said there in Jeremiah 31, after those days in their hearts, will I write my law? I'm going to do that. And then the devil, he'll come up twisting and swirling the thing all up. Got Matthew writing the New Testament, Mark writing the New Testament, Luke writing the New Testament, Paul writing the New Testament, John. I don't care who you want to put it. Fix it up, anybody. And Yahweh said, I'll, after those days, I'll do that. Now, it was Yahweh that wrote the, the old one. It's Yahweh that is going to write the new one. Now, listen, folks. Listen, I want to show you how silly it is. Now, if Yahweh's making a new covenant or making the first one, He's speaking in Hebrew to them. Then it's the same Elohim that's making a new covenant with the same people or a new testament. Now he looked like a fool talking to them in Greek or writing in Greek to a Hebrew speaking people. What your trouble is, you don't know the difference between the New Testament and the biography and the doctrines written by the apostles. Almost everything that you can think of is distorted. The name and everything else. Now look, go back down and read a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Now you got it over here, Jesus. Now that's interpolated. That was not over in the original transcribed. All right, read. Now all this was done. Now all this was done. That it might be fulfilled. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken of. Now you see that folks? Cause it's all right back there which was spoken of the Lord, which was spoken of Yahweh by the prophet saying, by the prophet Jer Isaiah saying, behold, a virgin shall, behold, a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a son, and shall bring forth a son 
And they shall call his name Emmanuel. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which being interpreted. Well, watch the interpretation. Is y Yahweh with us. Which, Elohim with us. I'm sorry. Elohim with us. Which is. Now you remember I told you. Yahweh himself was manifested in that body. Which by interpretation. A version has brought forth that son. A virgin brought forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which by interpretation is Yahweh with us, or Elohim with us. The Elohim that made the universe and its totality is now in the form and shape and form of a physical man. And Paul is looking at it and said, Yahweh Elohim was in the Messiah, reconciling the world unto himself. That's the reason why when he spoke, everything responded. Why? Because this is the creator that brought everything into existence that's manifested in this body. Without controversy, without any argument, or without any scientific or philosophical or academic research of any kind, without controversy, or without no debating or argumentation, without controversy, great is the mystery of Yahweh. Yahweh was manifested. Is that right? Right. And that virgin bought him forth. Do you see that now? Thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. The reason why his name was called Emmanuel, because he was Yahweh that was in that body. Scientific and burnt offering, thou wouldest not. as I'm sorry, you Doc. Sacrifice. Sacrifices. Sorry. <laughs> Scientific. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice and burnt offerings thou wouldest not as you had under the law, but a body, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and David speaking sacrifices and burnt offering. What are you offering up sacrifices and burnt offering and all of them foot washing and all of this water baptism and all these things that you did in the natural sense that was stipulated in the first covenant. Yahweh was not satisfied with it in the first place, said sacrifices and burnt offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. What are you talking about? I'm coming like the law and the prophets. And I, I would come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. What are you going to do when you get there? Do thy will, Yahweh. What's happening? He's taken away the first that he might establish the second. And now here those people are out there dip dabbling with that thing that was under the old covenant the natural ordinances and things when he comes in to fulfill and to move them out of the way. And when you dib dab with foot washing, dib dabble with any of, any of them, you deny that the same Yahweh incarnated in that body that gave and instituted the law was incarnated in that body. And he was the only one that could move it. And he told the Jews, don't you think that I come to destroy the law or the prophets? I come to fulfill. Verily, verily, I say unto you that one jot mm -hmm. or one tittle of the law shall in no wise pass until it all be fulfilled. When he had fulfilled everything, 
He bowed his head in the locks of his shoulder, hung out there on Golgotha, on the cross. He said, it's finished. What's finished? I'm finished fulfilling the law and change the, the natural is change so that the law of the spirit might come of effect. That's beautiful. And when you bring it up here in these congregations and all, you deny that he took all those cardinal ordinances when he died. You deny that he's made a new covenant. You deny that he removed the old one. And that's why Jude is complaining. Jude said, these angels that sin." Yahweh has cast them down unto hell bound into chains of darkness to be reserved. <coughs> Excuse me. These old lying dogs out there calling themselves preaching, waving their license around, talking about a DD masquerading his credentials. I went to Morehouse Theological Seminary. I went to Payne Theological Seminary. I went to Yale, I went to Harvard, I went to Washington. Here is my degree. <laughs> now you're supposed to accept that as a partaker, but when you get it in the scriptures, you find the spirit there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can continue from here, Doc. Okay. Go ahead. A, a carnal mind can't penetrate that spiritual be that spiritual realm subject to thinking yes i've been carnal just like you all of you have been from adam on down all that's why it is it necessitates a new birth nobody got in got no business running around boasting and blowing and bragging about something ain't nobody got no preeminence over nobody. All have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. And you're no smarter than nobody else. Yahweh gave you a sufficient amount of intelligence to understand and to comp comprehend his purpose. As it said over there in the first chapter of John, Yahweh enlightened every man that comes in the world give you a sufficient amount of intelligence. Now, if you want to stand straight up and look at the thing as it is, as it is revealed from Yahweh, and then deny for me and my part, I've done my job. And shall call his name Emmanuel, which is by interpretation, Elohim with us. Now, he's been walking around and saying, look, telling them, I ain't come in my own name. I'm come in my father's name. What's your father's name? Yahweh. What's your name? Yahshua. What's the name of the Holy Spirit? Elohim. Hebrew, Hebrew names, not Greek. That's why he come in in his father's name and he walked around. Now you watch. He walked around talking about my father, my father, boys, my father, boys, 12 of them. One of them said this, Philip, now you see, now you've been talking about your father a long time. Though your father's name was supposed to be Joseph and your mother's name is Mary. Now you've been talking about your father. Now you know us. Pardon me, now you show us your father. Make it clear so we won't be in no debt. Are you listening now? Then he talks to them, says, Philip, have I been so long a time with you and you don't know me? When you see me, you see the father. When you really see me, I proceeded and come forth from the father. And when you see me, you see the father. I told you, matter comes from spirit. I told you that pure spirit or a line of demarcation or incorporalization come from spirit. 
And when you see where I come from and where I go back to, then there's no more question about it. Now, when you see that, then you see the father. Elohim had made the universe and was manifest in the body. Sacrifices and burnt off offerings thou wouldest not, but body hath thou prepared for me and said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will, O Yahweh. Well, the Sanhedrin council said, well, if he's all, if he's all right, if he's the Messiah, why didn't he report up here to us? The 70 before he went out yonder and hooting and hollering out there and running around out there in the wilderness and around through Galilee and Jerusalem. First one place and another. Why didn't he come to see us about it? And tell us he was the Messiah. That's what the rabbis wrote. I got I got the book at home. Well now, when he was 12 years old, he come back out of Egypt. At 12, when he was 13, he was considered grown. And you're responsible for your own self. When he was 12 years old, and the prophets said, Yahweh shall suddenly appear to Israel. He went up there to the feast of the Passover, and he was 12 years old at that time when Mary and Joseph and them went on in the crowd and went on back to where he come from. And they left him up there, and he's up there talking with the Sanhedrin council, the doctors of the law, the doctors, smart boys, suddenly appeared. They were astonished at what he had said at his doctrine. Is that what your book says? Then Mary and Joseph and them, they're going on with the crowd, just like the rest of them do, right on with the crowd, a whole day's journey, assuming he was in the crowd, by and by, where he was, couldn't find him, go on back up to Jerusalem, back up there at the Passover. And when they found him, he was up there in the temple talking with the doctors, the Sanhedrin council, the smart boys, the scribe, the wise men, them that controlled and governed Israel, that interpreted the law, and they were astonished at the things that he said. And when they found him, this is what they said to him, said, now look here, boy, <laughs> don't you know no matter than, no, don't you know no better than that? Say, don't you know that we went a whole day's journey here and we assumed you was in the crowd? You ought not to you you ought not to do like that. He said, He say, look here, Ma, look here, woman. Don't you know? I'm going on 13. It's time for me to be about my father's Yahweh's business. And don't you and don't you see him suddenly appearing at the temple and they don't know him when he appeared? They didn't know him who he, they didn't know nothing about him. And yet the prophet said a virgin shall conceive, conceive and bring forth a son. And they told even, and they told even where he was supposed to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. I ain't got time to go into all that. Is that right? Right. And you remember Herod, all this fulfilling law and prophecy. Herod, you know, had them children slaughtered. And Yahweh appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him to take the young child and flee into Egypt. Pardon me. And that was done when the children were slain, says Rachel, weeping for her children. That's what the prophecy said that that's about. He would, that's what he would do. Oh, everything, every move he made, even from, from, from the time he's conceived. You just said there, a virgin shall conceive. Ain't that what the Annunciation said? Said that which is conceived is of the Holy Spirit. Virgin, virgin, give birth to a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which is in, which is by interpretation 
Elohim with us. Children, I know I'm, uh, I'm what I'm talking about. I'm not guessing. I'm not speculating. And if you hear me, you'll save your soul. Now, they didn't know, and they went on through years, and finally, by and by, and when they crucified him out there, they didn't know. Paul said, if they had known in the second chapter of 1 Corinthians, said, if they had known, they would not have crucified the Savior of glory. And when Peter got up there after Pentecost, after he received the Holy Spirit, said, all, all the house of Israel, no, no, all, the whole shooting match, everybody, all of you will know <coughs> of assuredly that you with wicked hands, you have taken and crucified the, crucified Yahshua the Messiah. Um, and Elohim raised him, and, and Yahweh raised him up from the dead. Now, what must, pardon me, now, what must, now, when they heard that they were pricked in their heart, say now, what shall we do? Said, repent, apologize, every one of you, and be baptized in his name, or baptize, be immersed in his name, or baptized in his name. Somebody said, well, now, I thought you didn't believe in water baptism. Well, they wasn't talking about water baptism, and they was preaching up there. Yahshua himself, John 5 and 39 Ye that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, you reading back, you're reading in the law, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And you know just as well as I do, the Colorado River, or nothing like that, don't run out of nobody's belly, as John said. This spake he of the spirit, but at the time, that he spoke those words, the spirit was not yet given. And when Peter and them was preaching out there on the day of Pentecost, was preaching according to the scriptures, living water was flowing. You, you immersed in that. Repent and apologize, everyone. Nobody got no excuse, Paul is saying. Virgin shall conceive and bear and bring forth a son. Virgin shall conceive, and if I told you now, I'm questioning now, why did Yahweh say a virgin shall conceive? Now you read over there in Isaiah, a virgin would conceive. You read here in Matthew, now I'm questioning uh, Yahweh. Now, why in the world did he say that? Now you read that. Now you don't know where to read. You get the point? You are lost for chapter and verse, running references, you don't know where to look, where to read, you can have a concordance, ain't got to help you, you ain't going to help you, you just, you just don't know where to read. Well, I told you that matter. If, if, if everything come from spirit, took on incorporeal and, and then come down into matter, and then you're reading about John on the Isle of Patmos. Now here you are. You're back over in Genesis. And I told you I'd explain the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. Now I'm questioning what John's doing on the Isle of Patmos. And whether what they said about this or whether he was there or not. You have to do something with me. Now if John was on, if John wasn't on the Isle of Patmos, Moses wasn't either. Yahshua told them, boys, now you listen at me. He told them that the devil would cause some of them to be beheaded, and he's going to put them, for my name's sake, for to suffer. One, for his name's sake. And he looked over down in Peter and then looked over there. Now you have to follow me, because if you don't, you can't see what I'm talking about. You can't understand. Looked over there, and there's and and there's John. He didn't say anything about what was going to happen to John. Right on the carpet, they put him. They asked him about it. Say, 
Well, what about this fella, John? Pete. And this was what he said. What if I, that he tarry till I come? What's that? What's what's that, your business? Now, his life was preserved. Peter, that he had to be led to Babylon in order to show you, or he's off in Babylon. James, Herod put him to death, chopping a uh, chopping block. Many of them had been put to death. And here's John. He's escaped all of these things. Why? And he's got to be on the Isle of Patmos. And now this beginning and this end, they got to be just alike. Now Moses saw the earth surrounded by water in the beginning of his vision, in the beginning of the vision. Doc, you help me now. You all help me with the charts because I'm going to try to get through them as quick as po as I possibly can. But now his, his life was preserved. Moses had said, you said to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word. Tape two, side one. Virgin shall conceive and bear, bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Is that right? Right. <clears throat> now look, look. Better come from, pardon me, matter come from spirit, and it's inorganic. It's unorganized, a mass, a coring mass. I use the words amalgamation, conglomerated. It means a coring mass of undescribable of any particular shape and form. That's that's matter. That's the condition that it come from. Having passed through various stages, comes on down through the physical, atomic, molecular, cosmological structure of the universe, and it's being created by the pattern, by Yahweh himself. The invisible un understood by the visible, and if the invisible come from, took on incorporeal, then created then the visible coring mask of matter. It's got to be surrounded by water. The earth has got to be surrounded by water. And Moses is seeing him in the beginning of his vision, in the beginning in, the gen in Genesis. Now, that's the way Moses seen it. If you take the 24th chapter of Exodus, there then you'll see that he went up into that mountain and Yahweh is showing this to him in a vision, shows him the production of the earth. He shows him the man, Adam, taken, taken out of the bowels of the womb of Mother Earth. Now, here comes this virgin, Yahweh the Father, from whence it comes, Mother Earth, the mother, the bowels, and womb of Mother Earth before any sin is committed upon her. Yahweh reached in the bowels and he knew that Mother Earth, and he knew that, I'm sorry, and he knew that virgin Mother Earth and took that woman out of there, just like this one proceeds and comes from indescribable. And therein, Yahweh shall, I'm sorry, and there and therefore Yahweh shall, if it was that way in that case, then a virgin would have to conceive and bring forth a son, and thou would have to call his name Emmanuel, which by interpretation, the creator with us, and the body that he had was immaculate, and he was immaculate with the spirit within. Now, you understand now. You following me through? Mm -hmm. Are you following me through? That's why Isaiah said, now this is the law back over here. And this is the prophets. I mean, what Moses is writing in Genesis. And then, then here's the prophets over here. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that matter when it comes first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, and so forth and so on. And it's taking on shape and form. And vegetation, the flowers, everything you come up on, that operation goes through that veil. 
Now you all show them now everything. Now you're coming, you're coming down from here and back here. And every time you come through that, that veil, each one of these days that Moses is seeing this vision up here on the mount, and he's just writing down, telling you what he saw in the vision. Now, in the beginning of the vision, the earth was surrounded by water. Now, watch. If that's true, we got to see. Go ahead, uh, Dr. McCain, please. We got to see him out there in the 24th chapter of Exodus, the 9th and the 10th, before he sees the creation, vision of creation, and he writes down what he sees. He said, the cloud covered the mountain six days. And Moses was six days seeing that vision running back over it. He sees in that vision, he sees Elohim create the heavens and the earth, and he sees it without shape and form. He sees it surrounded by water. He sees Yahweh divide the light from the darkness. Now listen, don't you see the veils dividing between here? Don't you see that? Then Yahweh divided the light from the darkness and Yahweh divided the waters above from the waters beneath. Now you see what them boys is doing over there? I'm working right by that pattern. You can't tell me nothing because you don't know nothing to tell me. Tell me why Yahweh divided the light from the darkness. Why Yahweh divided waters above from the waters beneath. And why Yahweh divided the forms of the biological kingdom from the ontological kingdom. Every time you come up on that veil there, then you got to go on up into ethereal space Show them birds flying through the mist of, well, now, you got the angels on this veil here. In other place, you got the stars. I'm scrutinizing out everything, supernal nature and everything there is in nature. I'm fully conscious of who I am. And I told you last Sunday, I know who you are going by the pattern. Now, if you don't go by it, I see you made a mess out of it. Now, here's some scientific smart Alex. He's studying signs. Well, Jimmy, let this be your break. This be your turn. First Timothy 6.20. Somebody else get Daniel uh, 1 and 4. Scientific smart Alec, always trying to show somebody how smart they are, says, look here, let me tell you something. You know, ever hear, you know, ever hear anything about lock lace? Yes, lock lace was an astronomer, astronomer a mathematician. He wrote a great big book, then took it to the king and asked the king to read it and give him a comment on it. The king took the book and read it all the way through, said, what's your comment? Said, I didn't see where you said. Okay, see, uh, the king took the book and read it all the way through said, what's your comment? Said, I didn't see where you said anything at all about Yahweh in the book when he read it. Lockley said, well, I didn't say I, I'm doing this. God ain't doing it. I'm doing this. He left God completely out of it. The king questioned him about it, said, God ain't doing the creating. It's me. Whew. Have mercy. Okay, it's one o'clock. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. We thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes to Tuesday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and 12 p.m. to 2 a.m. Malaysia, and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. To make the class is Sunday from 7 p.m. Eastern. Oh, I'm sorry, we're not so doing the. I'm sorry, we're not doing the Jamaica class anymore. But we do have a gathering Mondays from 7:30 Monday Thursday 7:30 to 9 the Brooklyn class. Okay. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the Book of Jude. From the Holy Name Bible, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times and now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Yeah.